Hello, uh, my name is Vahid Asadi, and I'm going to talk about my joint work with uh, Sasha Golovnev, Tom Gur, and Igor Shinkar about worst case to average case reduction via additive combinatorics. So the problem that we are thinking about in this work is the problem of boosting knowledge uh, by average to worst case reductions. And in particular, we want to know that given a solution that only works for a few instances of possible inputs, can we basically drive a solution that works on all possible inputs? There are usually two perspectives uh, about this type of reductions. Uh, the optimist perspective uh, basically thinks that if, uh, if you want to solve a problem, maybe it's easier to solve it just for like a few instances and maybe that gives us some hope uh, to give a solution uh, using this kind of reductions. And there's also a pessimist perspective that basically says that a problem, I mean, this type of problem should be very hard to solve because it's even hard to solve on like a tiny fraction of possible inputs. So the main result of this work is a new framework for worst case to average case reductions uh, that basically is using some local correction lemmas based on additive combinatorics. And we use this framework to derive some results for algorithms for matrix multiplication, data structures for linear problems, online matrix vector multiplication, and also uh, weak average case reductions for polynomial evaluation. And in this presentation, I'm going to cover the algorithms for matrix multiplication as an example of this framework. So here's the main result. Suppose we are given an algorithm that gets two n by n matrices A and B over a prime field F. And the algorithm is guaranteed to run in time T and it always outputs the correct answer, but only with probability alpha. And we think of alpha like as a very tiny constant, for example, 1% or 2%. Then, there exists an algorithm alg star that gets uh, input matrices A and B and runs in the, essentially the same time O of T, uh, but for all possible inputs A and B outputs the correct answer with high probability, with probability greater than, for example, 99%. So note that uh, the original algorithm succeeds only on 1% of the inputs, but alg star succeeds on all possible inputs. So before talking about the results, uh, let's review some basics about matrix multiplication. So we are thinking about uh, the, uh, the problem of computing the product of two matrices A and B. And it's uh, clear that the output has N squared entries and computing each one of them can be done in uh, linear time. So there exists a naive algorithm that computes the matrix multiplication in time NQ. But there are better algorithms for, uh, for this task. For example, Strassen has an algorithm that runs in time O n to the power 2.8, uh, Coppersmith, Winograd in O n to the power uh, 2.376, and recently Allman and Vasilevska Williams in n to the power 2.37286. And there is a huge open problem in this line of research that asks whether it's possible to compute matrix, uh, matrix multiplication in time uh, uh, very close to n squared. So a problem of computing matrix multiplication in time n squared uh, looks to be a difficult problem. So one might ask, how about uh, heuristics for this task? For example, is it possible uh, to come up with an algorithm that, uh, that has time close to n squared, but it only outputs the correct answer with uh, some probability? And for example, we can ask whether it's possible to design an algorithm that succeeds only on maybe 99% of the inputs or maybe on like, even 1% of the possible inputs. But before that, we have to define uh, what, do, what do we mean by 1% of the inputs. So to make it uh, more formal, we consider matrices uh, in, in a, a prime field uh, F, for example. 
So let's let's talk about algorithms that succeed on 99% of inputs. Here's a proposition. Uh, suppose we are given an algorithm that given two matrices A and B, uh, computes the product with probability 99%. Then we can do a linear self-correction uh, uh, using BLR technique to go from average case to worst case. So here's what we are going to do. Given A and B, we're going to sample two random matrices R and S, and we are going to make the following four calls to the original algorithm. And then we are going to output their sum. Well, the running time is basically the same. We are just making four uh, invocations of, uh, of, of the original al algorithm. And uh, each one of these calls is a uniform, uh, uniformly random call uh, over the input space. So they will be correct with probability 99%. So one other uh, thing that we know about matrix multiplication is that we can actually verify uh, whether A, B equals to C uh, using faster algorithms. And in particular, we're going to talk about Freyvold's algorithm. So here's how this algorithm works. Given uh, three matrices, A, B, and C, we want to check whether A, B equals C. So we're going to repeat this process uh, constantly many times, for example, 10 times. And in each run, we're going to sample a random vector in, for example, 0, 1 to the n, if you're thinking about uh, binary field. And then we are going to compute a, b times r, and also c times r. And then we are going to compare the result. I mean, if they're not equal, then it must be the case that a, b is not equal to c. And if for all these uh, trials, uh, the answer turns out to be equal, then we can safely uh, say that AB equals to C. And the thing about this uh, algorithm is that it allows us to use uh, the BLR type reduction uh, for success rates uh, that are greater than uh, three quarters from plus um, epsilon. We just have to repeat uh, the process uh, one over O of one over epsilon many times and do the verification to check whether uh, the answer is correct. And the key observation in this algorithm is that in order to compute uh, a, b times r, we don't really have to compute a, b first. We can uh, just multiply b to r first and do the same for a. So we can do this in o and squared. So the conclusion of this slide is that uh, finding an algorithm that outputs the correct answer with some constant uh, epsilon probability uh, can also be very useful. So now we can return to the main result that we are going to prove. So we want to prove that if an algorithm ALG is given to us that we know it runs in time T and outputs the correct answer only with probability alpha, then we want to show that we can construct an algorithm ALG star that uh, essentially runs in the same uh, running time and outputs uh, the correct answer for all possible inputs A and B with high probability. And one corollary of, uh, of this result is that if the original algorithm is an algorithm that runs in O n squared and succeeds on one over square root log n fraction of inputs, then alg star succeeds on all inputs and works in time uh, O tilde of n squared. So again, uh, note that the first algorithm succeeds on, for example, 1% of the inputs when we think of alpha as being like a very tiny constant, but uh, alg star succeeds on all possible inputs. So we're going to make some uh, simplifying assumptions for this presentation. Uh, first, we assume that uh, the algorithm that is given to us is deterministic. And we also assume that uh, for the input A and B uh, that are given to us, A is kind of, you can think of it as a good uh, matrix for, for the original algorithm. And we're going to assume that the probability over possible Bs, uh, the algorithm outputs the, uh, the multiplication of A and B prime 
with, uh, with some constant uh, probability. And we also, as I said, going to assume that alpha is a constant here. And we're going to think about uh, the binary field. So these are the simplifying assumptions that we're going to use to, to explain the result. So one, one conclusion of, of these assumptions is that we don't need to really do any self-correction for A, uh, but we have to do something for B. Okay. So the idea was uh, that, that uh, we, we use in the assumption is that we are going to fix an A such that uh, we know the original algorithm is kind of working okay, given that A. And this basically means that algorithm outputs uh, AB for that fixed A with probability like 1%. And here the probability is just over B. So we're going to next define this set X, which can basically be reviewed as the set of good Bs for that particular, uh, that particular A. It's the set of Bs uh, that given, that, uh, given A and that B, the algorithm outputs the correct answer. Then because we know that the probability, is, uh, probability of outputting the correct answer is alpha, we can immediately conclude that uh, size of this set X is greater or equal than alpha times two to the power N squared. But two to the power N squared is like the set of all possible matrices B. Then we are going to construct an algorithm XR as follows. First, if B belongs to the set X, then we know that uh, we're, in, we're in good shape because we can just run the original algorithm and output the correct answer. But if B does not belong to the set X, then we, we are hoping to do some kind of uh, self-correction for B. And we may try to write B as some of like two matrices M1 and M2 and hope that M1 and M2 belong to X. Or maybe we can do it for like, uh, four matrices, M1 to M4. But uh, let's first see why this kind of self-correction doesn't work in this case. So note that the algorithm that is given to us can be designed in any arbitrary way. And suppose the algorithm works as follows. Given uh, matrices A and B, it checks whether the first entry of matrix B is equal to zero or not. And if it's equal to zero, then it outputs the correct answer. And if it's not equal to zero or it equals one, then it just outputs some junk. Then it's clear that in this case, we have that alpha is one half. So it, in like one half of possible inputs, it outputs the correct answer. But what if uh, the matrix B that's given to us uh, has a first entry equal to one? Then is it possible to self-correct B using uh, the BLR type uh, techniques. But it's kind of uh, clear that we cannot write uh, such a matrix B as some of uh, a bunch of matrices such that all of them have entry zero as their first entries. At least one of them must have uh, one in the first entry. So here's uh, where we, uh, we can use some techniques from additive combinatorics. So first let's review some basics of additive combinatorics and in particular, let's define a subset. Suppose we have a set X, which is a subset of F, uh, F2 to the N. And we define X plus X as follows. It's basically some of uh, all possible elements, X and X prime, where N, X and X prime both belong to X. Similarly, we can define X plus X plus X and denote it by three X. And also we can do the same for any, any constant T. Uh, if we continue this uh, constructing the sound sets, we eventually get to span off uh, the set X. But the goal of additive combinatorics is uh, to show some nice uh, additive structures already in two X or three X. So one, uh, the main lemma that uh, we're going to use in this work is the, the lemma known as uh, Bogadiobov's lemma. Uh, and it basically says the following. Suppose we have a set X in F to the N and we know that size of X is like alpha times two to the power N. So it has density alpha. 
Then uh, the lemma says that there exists a subspace V inside 4x, uh, such that uh, dimension of V is equal n minus one over alpha squared. So this lemma itself is a very nice and useful lemma in additive combinatorics, but it's not very clear how can we use it uh, to do self-correction. Because this lemma just states that such a subspace exists. What we need is a probabilistic version of Bogolyubov's lemma, which uh, says the following. Again, we, say, uh, we assume there is a set x in f to the n, and we assume density of x is alpha. Then there exists subspace v in 4x, and dimension of v is again equal to n minus 1 over alpha squared. But we also know that if we sample, uh, I mean, for each element v in the subspace, if we sample x1, x2, and x3, and set x4 to be v minus x1, x2, x3, then the probability that all these xi's belong to set x is greater than alpha to the power five. So it basically implies that each element in the subspace has many representations in 4x. And there is also an improvement of these results due to Sanders that shows that there exists such, uh, such subspace, uh, but with uh, better dimension, with dimension n minus O of log to the power four of one over alpha. So let's return to matrix multiplication and see whether we can use uh, the probabilistic value of lemma to derive some results. Again, we're going to define a set uh, X as before. It's a set of uh, good matrices B. And uh, we were constructing the new algorithm alg star on input A and B as follows. So we saw that if B belongs uh, to set of good matrices uh, X, then we can easily run the original algorithm on A and B and get the correct answer. But if B does not belong to X, then we can use the set X to, uh, and apply the Bogoli of lemma on the set X to get a subspace B. And if uh, the matrix B belongs to V, then we can sample a representation M1 to M4 uh, and hope that these four matrices belong to X. Then we can break the, uh, we can break A times B into A times M1, A times M2, uh, A times M3 and A times M4 and return the sum. But we know that uh, this uh, like sampling re representation would only happen with probability like alpha to the power of five, but we can use the uh, frameworks algorithm to verify this answer. And if it's not correct, then we can sample another representation. So it basically means that we can, uh, on expectation, we can do like one over alpha to the power of five, uh, many samplings and hope that one of them uh, will give us a good, uh, good result. But the problem is that we don't know uh, what X or what V is. And we don't, in particular, we don't know whether B belongs to B. Uh, but note that uh, even if we don't know what X or V is, we can say that if B belongs to X or B belongs to B, then we can solve the problem and we can easily verify the answer uh, using Freiburg's algorithm. So let's see what can we do for the case when B does not belong to the subspace B. Again, we're going to define the same set X and we saw that if B belongs to set X, then we're good. We also saw that if B belongs to subspace V, we can use Bogoli of Sema and do some self-correction and uh, get the correct answer. But if B does not belong to V, we have to do uh, an extra step. But let's pause for a moment and see what did we really gain here from moving from set X to subspace V. So the set X had density alpha, but we moved to a subspace V of small de smaller density. But the good thing about V is that uh, it has some structure because we know that it's a subspace. 
And in contrast, X, uh, we basically don't know anything about X and it can be designed in any arbitrary uh, way. So we're gonna use this fact to our advantage. And additionally, we need the following uh, observation. Suppose we have a matrix L and we know that uh, L has some uh, constant rank K. And we also know the column decomposition of, uh, uh, of, of, the, of the slow rank matrix L. Then we can compute A times L in time N squared times K. How? We just, we just use the fact that uh, we know the decomposition of uh, the columns. And for the first K columns, we do the like typical matrix vector multiplication, which takes K time K times N square. And for the remaining N minus K columns, we are gonna use uh, the column decomposition instead of multiplying uh, matrix A into those columns. And this will take uh, time N minus K times of KN. So let's return to the matrix multiplication problem. And in particular, let's return to the case where B does not belong to subspace V. Then in this case, we can write B as sum of a low rank matrix L plus B minus L. Now the observation is that L has rank K and we are basically going to construct L ourselves. We're going to sample a random uh, low rank matrix L and we're going to set the uh, rank K to be equal to co-dimension of V, which is, uh, which is a constant that only depends on alpha. And we are also going to hope that B, B minus L is in V. And this happens with uh, some probability that's very close or equal to two to the power minus K. And the important observation is that we can compute uh, A times L in time K and squared. Why? Because L is a low rank matrix. And then if B minus L is in V, then it can be computed in O T of N. How? We are going to use the case two where we use like Bogolyubov's lemma plus self-correction. So in this slide, I'm gonna summarize uh, the main result for matrix multiplication. So the main result is uh, as follows. We are given an algorithm R that gets two N by N matrices A and B over, over uh, prime field F. And we assume that L runs in time T and it outputs the correct answer with probability alpha. Then there is an algorithm XR that gets two n by n by n matrices A and B, runs in essentially the same running time, only a constant times T where constant depends on alpha. And it outputs the correct answer with high probability for all possible inputs A and B. And again, the corollary is that if the original algorithm runs in time n squared and succeeds only on one over square root log n fraction of inputs, then Alexander succeeds on all inputs and works in time very close to n squared. Uh, just uh, let me point out again that the original algorithm only succeeds on one percent of the inputs, and uh, the constructed algorithm succeeds on all inputs with high probability. I'm going to conclude this uh, presentation by mentioning a few open problems. So I, I briefly mentioned the Sanders result about uh, quasi-polynomial Bogolyubov's lemma. So one can ask whether it's possible to prove a polynomial Bogolyubov's lemma. And it's a very uh, big and important conjecture in, uh, in additive combinatorics literature. We can also ask about whether it's possible to derive more reductions with, with similar techniques. For example, uh, one possible direction is to assume that uh, the algorithm that is given to us for matrix multiplication uh, has some like guarantee on the agreement with the correct output. 
And we can ask whether we can, uh, we can obtain a self-correction result in this uh, more restrictive setting. And also uh, one, another open problem is to give uh, non trivial example where we can basically use the same reduction uh, for algorithms. And in particular, uh, it's interesting to ask whether uh, we can get rid of efficient verification uh, to use this technique. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching.